The YPR-765 Infantry Fighting Vehicle is one of those machines that rarely makes headlines, yet its quiet effectiveness secured it a long career in multiple armed forces around the world. Built in the Netherlands, but designed on the basis of the American M113 Armored Personnel Carrier, it represents the transformation of a simple battlefield transporter into a capable fighting vehicle. For decades, it played a central role in the Royal Netherlands Army, becoming not only a workhorse, but also a symbol of how a modest design can evolve into something greater when adjusted to meet real combat needs. Its history, performance, and international adoption reveal much about the Cold War era and the demands placed on mechanized infantry during that time. The story of the YPR-765 begins with its predecessor, the M113. When the M113 first appeared, it was revolutionary in its simplicity, offering NATO forces a light, tracked vehicle capable of moving troops across the battlefield under armor protection. Yet by the 1970s the limits of this design had become clear. Armed only with a single heavy machine gun, the M113 was no match for increasingly powerful armored vehicles or entrenched infantry. Its aluminum armor, while adequate for small arms fire, did little against heavier weapons, and the vehicle lacked the kind of punch that mechanized troops required when facing more advanced Soviet hardware. The Netherlands, having relied heavily on the M113, realized it needed more than a transporter. It needed an infantry fighting vehicle, something that could bring soldiers to the front line while also holding its own in combat. This need drove the birth of the YPR-765. Developed by FMC Corporation, the same company that designed the M113 and produced locally by Dutch industry, the YPR-765 was a careful evolution rather than a radical departure. It kept the tracked mobility and amphibious qualities of its predecessor, but introduced meaningful changes. Its most important improvement was its armament. The centerpiece of the vehicle was the Erlikon KBA 25mm autocannon mounted in a one-man turret. This weapon changed everything. Suddenly, the vehicle could engage other lightly armored vehicles, fortifications, and even low-flying helicopters. It gave mechanized infantry units the ability to fight back rather than simply carry troops to the battle. Alongside this autocannon was a coaxial 7.62 mm machine gun, useful against enemy infantry and soft targets. In some versions, the addition of a tow missile launcher provided even greater firepower, giving the YPR-765 an anti-tank capability that the M113 could never match. Armor protection was another area where the new design stood apart. Constructed with spaced aluminum armor, the YPR-765 offered better resistance to ballistic threats than its American ancestor. The idea behind spaced armor was to trigger explosive rounds before they could fully penetrate, reducing their lethality. This made the vehicle far more survivable against artillery fragments and small-caliber weapons. While it was never meant to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with main battle tanks, the YPR-765 could survive longer in contested environments, which was critical for mechanized troops who often operated near the front. Mobility remained one of the defining strengths of the platform. Powered by a Detroit Diesel 6V 53T engine, the YPR-765 could reach more than 60 kilometers per hour on roads, with enough torque to handle rough terrain. Its torsion bar suspension provided stability and comfort, and like its predecessor, it could swim across rivers and lakes without special preparation. This amphibious ability made it especially valuable in Europe, where water obstacles could otherwise slow the advance of mechanized formations. For the Netherlands, a country filled with rivers and canals, this feature was essential. Inside, the vehicle was designed to carry three crew members and seven fully armed infantry soldiers. The commander, gunner, and driver operated the vehicle, while the troops sat in the rear compartment, ready to dismount quickly through a powered rear ramp. Firing ports along the sides allowed soldiers to shoot from within the vehicle, giving them some ability to fight even before dismounting. This feature reflected the Cold War emphasis on keeping troops under armor protection as long as possible in the face of potential nuclear, chemical, or heavy artillery threats. Perhaps the greatest strength of the YPR-765 was its adaptability. The Netherlands developed a whole family of variants based on the basic chassis, each designed for a different role. The standard infantry fighting vehicle, 
known as the PRI, was only one of many. There were command versions equipped with radios and mapping equipment, medical evacuation versions with room for stretchers, cargo carriers for logistics, and artillery observation vehicles that allowed forward observers to call and fire missions. Specialized anti-tank variants carried tow missile launchers, providing a mobile defense against armored breakthroughs. This versatility meant that the YPR-765 could serve as a backbone vehicle for entire mechanized brigades, filling nearly every supporting role needed on the modern battlefield. Its success did not go unnoticed abroad. Belgium adopted a nearly identical version called the AIFV, which differed mainly in armament configurations. Other countries, including Egypt, Jordan, and Chile, purchased the YPR-765 or its derivatives finding it to be a cost-effective solution for modernizing their mechanized forces. Turkey went a step further by producing its own localized version, known as the ACV-300, which incorporated some design changes and continues to serve in significant numbers today. This widespread adoption speaks to the reliability of the design and its ability to perform well across different climates and terrains. In actual service, the YPR-765 proved itself to be dependable, easy to maintain, and robust enough to handle decades of use. It remained in the Dutch inventory for more than 30 years, serving in training exercises and peacekeeping missions, and later seeing operational deployment abroad. Its longevity illustrates how incremental but thoughtful improvements to a proven platform can produce a vehicle that remains relevant long after its introduction. Although the Netherlands eventually phased it out in favor of the CV-90, a much more modern and heavily armed infantry fighting vehicle, the YPR-765 left behind a legacy of reliability and adaptability. The lessons of the YPR-765 go beyond its specifications. It demonstrated that armies do not always need to pursue the most advanced or expensive option to achieve effectiveness. By building on the M113 strengths while addressing its weaknesses, the Dutch created a vehicle that met their needs precisely. It provided more protection and firepower without sacrificing the mobility that made the M113 so successful in the first place. In doing so, it became a bridge between the simple armored personnel carriers of the early Cold War and the heavily armed infantry fighting vehicles that dominate today's mechanized forces. Even now, long after its introduction, the YPR-765 continues to roll in several armies. Its ongoing use in countries outside the Netherlands shows that its design has not been rendered obsolete, even in an era of drones, advanced anti-tank weapons, and networked battlefields. While it may not stand on the cutting edge, it remains serviceable, affordable, and effective in many parts of the world. Its place in military history is secure as a practical, workmanlike vehicle that delivered exactly what its designers promised, a fighting machine that could protect and empower the infantry who relied on it. In the end, the YPR-765 is less about glory and more about function. It was not the flashiest vehicle of its time, nor was it the most heavily armed or armored. Yet it endured, it adapted, and it served faithfully across generations. That, perhaps, is the highest compliment a military vehicle can receive. Where many designs come and go, the YPR-765 has left a legacy of quiet, but undeniable importance.